Golden Globe is the Hertz car rental company. This video, therefore, will expound on the rise and fall of Hertz Company, which used to be a giant during its time. Hertz Car Rental Company was started by Walter Jacobs in 1918 as Rent-A-Car Inc. Jacobs was a pioneer of auto renting, and his ambition led to the Hertz Corporation. At this time, he was only 22 and established a car rental company with just 12 Ford Model Ts, with a shop south of the Loop in Chicago. The Ford Model Ts at this period had only been existent for around 10 years. However, Jacobs possessed a dream of having a multinational car renting company with a fleet of just 12 cars. This dream seemed to move in the right direction since within five years, the fleet had grown to approximately 600 vehicles. Besides, the business was already churning annual revenue of around 1 million US dollars on annual basis. As Jacobs was busy establishing the first fleet of the rental car company, another Chicago-bred individual named John D. Hertz also seemed to gain much interest in automobiles. After letting go of a reporting job at the Chicago Morning News, Hertz got a new one at a local car dealer, despite the fact that he could not drive himself yet. Around 1907, Hertz envisioned himself owning a cab business, whose competitive advantage would stem from low prices hence facilitating the affordability by the common citizens. Hertz started off with a fleet of seven cars that were rented out as taxis. Hertz would then establish the Yellow Cab Company in 1915. Surprisingly, the low prices set by Hertz, as well as the unique yellow shade of the cabs, became franchised throughout the United States of America. Coming from a man who could not drive, this was a big achievement. The real deal for John Hertz came about in 1923, when Jacobs' rent-a-car was already thriving. Having an insatiable appetite for business opportunities, Hertz decided to replicate his strategies with rent-a-car, which was up for sale. Hertz would purchase rent-a-car Inc., with Jacobs remaining a critical inner beacon for the years that followed. For instance, Jacobs served as the president of this new establishment until he retired in 1960. He would later become the director of the now Hertz Corporation till 1968. In the business world, many have argued that the special partnership and bond between Jacobs and Hertz was the driving force behind the transformation of this firm into stardom. It was able to mutate from a minute rent afford firm into a reputable global brand. After the 1923 purchase, Hertz changed the name of the car renting business from Rent-A-Car to Hertz Drive Yourself System. In approximately two years after the purchase, the business had already created an expensive rental network spanning from coast to coast. The boundaries of travel were also expanded in the United States, since he began to offer the pioneer advanced rental reservations by 1926. This alone facilitated a significant assurance to the rental car clients, which did not exist before. Hertz also established the rail drive. This was an entirely new service that allowed rental car consumers to drive their cars immediately after getting off the train. With the company moving towards the right direction, Hertz was not at any point tempted to slow down. 1932 saw the company opening the first rent-a-car facility at an airport. This was notably at the Chicago Midway Airport, where the Fly Drive rental car program was introduced. In 1933, the one-way rental was also introduced by Hertz, and this enhanced the adoption of rental cars in the United States of America. The company would experience a period of significant growth within the following years, and by 1938, it had expanded its network to Canada. Consequently, the firm was able to open a European location in France by 1950. This high-level risk-taking eventually paid off for John Hertz, as, by 1955, his company boasted of having approximately 1,000 locations. It made it the first rental car company to accomplish this in the globe. Since then, the Hertz Corporation has since been able to establish licensee, franchise as well, as well as corporate locations in areas such as Latin America, North America, Europe, Africa, Australia, New Zealand and the Middle East. In addition to car rentals, the firm also came up with fleet management and car leasing lines. Throughout its existence, the Hertz company has been keen on speed and convenience. Their underlying theme has been to put customer service first 
especially with the adoption of technological tools. In the 1960s and 70s, the company was keen on utilizing computers in the quest to simplify yet speed up the car rental mechanisms. For instance, 1972 saw the firm introducing the number one club, which in recent times has evolved into the Hertz Gold Plus rewards. This was a data system that was highly computerized, hence allowing the Hertz members to utilize the express service. Hertz strived to add value to the service, and this saw the members enjoy bypassing airport counters, hence going directly from an airplane to a rental car, as at 1989. Later on, the 1990s facilitated the establishment of the firm's first website, as well as an onboard navigation system dubbed Never Lost. The arrival of the 21st century ensured that Hertz continued to spread its wings, hence catering for its diverse consumers. In this, the constant integration of various services with technology saw the company grow uniquely. For instance, the Hertz Gold Plus Rewards program focused on serving the loyal clients by rewarding them. Besides, aspects such as convenience and speed began being facilitated through mobile applications, e-receipts, mobile alerts, as well as the express rent kiosks. To further differentiate itself from competitors, particularly in the 21st century, Hertz focused on according its consumers with top-notch products and services. A perfect epitome is the adoption of extensive car choices for its customers, specifically from eco-friendly hybrids that exist within the Green Traveler collection. It also has the high-performance luxury models that exist in the Dream Cars collection. Brand portfolio diversification has been the adopted theme in recent times with Hertz, including a broad range of offerings on and off airport rental programs. Across the globe, the company has approximately 10,300 locations, making it a reputable multinational firm. In 2013, it had a portfolio consisting of brands such as Hertz, Thrifty, Firefly, and Dollar. Through these brands, Hertz was able to establish the most diverse offerings in the global car rental sector. This way, a family seeking a budget-friendly rental for their vacation trip is sure to get ideal services, while a business class that seeks to take a business trip is also guaranteed of speed with convenience. Amid the novel coronavirus, Hertz found itself a casualty of the reputable businesses that are being brought to their knees, given the fact that most travel has been restricted in numerous parts of the globe. Here, Hertz joins the likes of Gold's Gym, Nyman Marcus, as well as the McClatchy newspaper chain in filing for bankruptcy protection in 2020. While it is easy to blame the pandemic on the woes of these global players, most failures leading to the fall revolve around the inability to recognize and act on the dynamic global trends in their respective industries. For Hertz, the long version of its woes is that it had relied heavily on consolidation and accounting to please its stakeholders, as well as ineffective management that did not stay true to the consumer tastes. For these reasons, the coronavirus acted as the last nail on Hertz's coffin, while competitors such as the Avis Budget Group continue to weather the storm. During the Chapter 11 petition, Hertz only listed $25.8 billion as assets, $1 billion as cash at hand, while it operates within a $24.4 billion debt. The recent fall can be dated back in the 90s, when Hertz engaged in a disastrous celebrity endorsement of OJ Simpson. While the former football running back had engaged in a successful commercial citing the speed and convenience of Hertz rental programs, the 1989 charge of the star for the assault and murder of his wife started to take a toll on the company. Surprisingly, Hertz maintained its ties with OJ Simpson, even during his trials, which ended in an acquittal. Even with Hertz citing a good business period, even after the trial of the century was over, Enterprise Holdings was ranked the new leader in the industry, with regards to number of offices and the fleet size in the trade publication, Auto Rental News. It shows that the Simpsons case inflicted a significant dent on the Hertz brand reputation. Although Hertz had partnered with a struggling Ford in the 1990s and slipping in the rental industry pecking order after Simpsons case, it was able to make good profits back then. This is until Ford sold Hertz to two private equity firms, as well as the Merrill Lynch & Co. buyout unit for an estimated $15 billion in 2005. From this period, 
Hertz started to buy and lease vehicles from automakers such as General Motors and others. In 2006, Hertz strived to poach Tenneco Inc.'s top executive, Mark Frisora, who became the chief executive officer. Through the efforts of this CEO, which constituted cutting thousands of jobs and cutting costs, Hertz was relisted. However, the company made a mistake by giving a hefty compensation of around 19.2 million, an amount that surpasses the compensation package for the Ford CEO in 2019. Luckily, the firm didn't hurt much and was even able to withstand the 2008-2009 global financial crisis. Even with expenses linked to the acquisition kept soaring up, the CEO, Frisora, looked for other avenues to maintain high profits. For instance, he kept vehicles for longer than the recommended 30,000 miles, leading to fraudulent actions. The firm also strived to replace its fleet, where it stated the older fleet was evolving into a turnoff to its clients. In another unfortunate event, the firm started to pursue a costly Dollar Thrifty Automotive Group Inc. acquisition deal. This was a drawn-out deal where Hertz tried to acquire Dollar for $1.2 billion in 2010. However, owing to the fact that a close rival, Avis, also wanted to acquire Dollar, a bidding war resulted. It made Hertz fork out $2.6 billion. Irrespective of the fact that the company's market share became diversified, the acquisition significantly added to the debt pile. Besides, this deal did not pay off due to the company's sedan-heavy fleet, which it had earlier acquired from GM and other manufacturers. Though, these vehicles were cost-effective. Consumer tastes and preferences had shifted to sports utility vehicles, SUVs. Another thing was that Hertz had to incur costs trying to combine and integrate their business model with that of Dollar Thrifty. For instance, computer systems were incompatible, while vehicle tires of Dollar were below Hertz's threshold and had to be replaced. As of 2012, Hertz ended with a debt of around $20.8 billion. In addition to the fraudulent keeping of vehicles for longer, Frisora also misstated the pre-tax income from February 2012 to March 2014 as a result of accounting errors. While major stakeholders such as Carla Khan facilitated the ouster of Frisora, the ideal people were not put into place going forward. An epitome of the hiring of John Tague, who was an ex-COO of United Airlines to run Dollar Thrifty, instead of the acquisition's then CEO, Scott Thompson. As such, Carl Akan led to a revolving door of managers at Hertz. Within the last decade, Hertz has also been unable to adapt to market trends. As a result, it faced stiff competition from ride-sharing companies such as Uber, Turo, and Lyft. In this, Fortune notes that since 2017, approximately half of all car rental consumers had switched to ride-sharing. This echoes the fact that Hertz has been making losses for the last four to six years. High staff turnover can be to blame, since the replacement of valuable staff is an expensive affair. With around 16,000 employees being laid off in 2020, it is clear that Hertz is not near a recovery point. Besides, the bankruptcy by Hertz is also bad news to automakers, as the rental car companies are the major buyers of new cars. In fact, Hertz resorted to selling its vehicles as used cars. As of March 2020, the United States fleet had got rid of 41,000 cars, while the European fleet around 13,000 cars. The analysis above is indicative that even for the multinational firms that enjoy a huge market share, aspects such as poor acquisitions, poor accounting, and even the failure to adapt to the dynamic market trends can be a path to their downfall. This is the case with the over 100-year-old Hertz Corporation, which has ended up being highly vulnerable in the wake of the current coronavirus pandemic. It has led to the once global giant filing for bankruptcy.